let's uh, learn how to model typeface type font such as a wooden font this is extremely useful for um, packaging illustration things like this and even to prototype wooden toy and I think it'll be something tricky to do in Photoshop so this is where Modo 3D uh, is quite powerful um, for the paint we could do this as a texture map here I'm gonna try to do things very simply so I would just model the scratch um, and for the wood we need a texture so we could use I just went online and I grabbed this one was not great it's uh, Douglas fir this one I like it but it's on an angle making it tricky or we could even grab um, one of those so you see this is where I grabbed it and I type I think a uh, wooden texture map and uh, we could also try one of those so maybe I'll take a few even some blanks and uh, we'll play with them so the final result should look like something like this uh, I'm still working on it but uh, this is what I did uh, yesterday quickly so I just took a font from Windows um, thicken it and did a chamfer by using the bevel tool and uh, using box or UV mapping I just applied this map and for the scratch I did it the easy way I uh, just model with the edge slice uh, it might not be the smartest way but uh, it works and to bend the text uh, we can do it with the bend tool uh, I also twist it with the twist and often the text taper so you could do it with the scale within the um, thicken or you could do it with uh, fall off and fall off is really amazing I've only seen this in Modo and you'll see it um, takes a few minutes to get used to it but it's an amazing tool it's almost like dealing with gradient and also here I will start to introduce bump bump mapping uh, I would not use a real bump I'll make it with the same texture but you'll see it'll help uh, making a thing rough look more like wood okay so we can start from scratch uh, so I'll just get a new model file and I'll close this one so I'm just gonna do a few fonts so maybe a C uh, yeah I'll do two three fonts because after as you can tell it's the exact same thing but you repeat empty layer the text tool is here and what Modo see it's any font true type or not that goes to uh, Windows uh, so if Microsoft Word sees it usually Modo should see it too and uh, and I think on Mac OS it's the same thing uh, now there are some complex fonts where Modo can fail because font can be tricky so you'll see uh, there's a few fonts that I not use so I'll type uh, just a few letters uh, even just uh, it's that's enough and I click uh, when you start with font try to use something thick you'll make less mistake and uh, and then you can go with uh, so what I, I meant is that there are some font like here I've got some uh, they, there's no preview of fonts so sometimes I preview them in Word or Photoshop but there are some font here uh, a bit uh, complex that uh, and when I say model will not do a good job you'll see it uh, the edge will be on top of a face it just wouldn't work uh, you could also model your own font with the pen tool and tracing something or bring an AI file using AI version 8 from Illustrator so I type the text pick the font and we can choose the spacing all of this I usually leave everything at default and I go Q to drop the tool so now what we have look like polygon but it's not uh, fully a polygon yet and it's one layer so usually straight after doing the text uh, we use geometry freeze and all by default and when you say okay now you've got real font and the it's is very easy but if you have an edge or an O you'll see uh, an edge connected here 
uh, and now to know if it works it's if you can select it uh, before it was one big face so that means it worked uh, usually what I would do here I would right click and unmerge because I want them one by one and here very important name them like with fonts even the mask with the shading you have to name it you'll get so lost especially when you start to have scratch uh, different mask so spend time to name them and uh, the one you don't use at this point just hide them so select this shift a to center it and usually i would start with a thicken to give it thickness click here use the blue for the depth so as you can tell uh, in the drawing that i had it's pretty long so i'll go somewhere here maybe even and you could type huh? you could just say uh, minus three meter so you can tell the font is really big but that's okay if you want to do a taper uh, i i'll show fall off in a few minutes but i do prefer fall off but you could do it here if you went 95 you see you'll get a taper the thing that I'm not a huge fan here is that you see it leave the ground because it's scaled from here so if I did this usually I would go in point or press one a middle click if you don't have the rectangle right click lasso rectangle or use the lasso I prefer this uh, W and uh, move this down I think it'll get a nicer effect Q now at this point before doing uh, anything else I would do my chamfer here so polygon you could use the chamfer tool but or three but to be simple just go B and move it out like this just a hair that'll make the paint stick out and uh, scale it in a little bit if you want to do a pen scratch uh, at least my way I'm not saying it's the best but we can use the edge slice and as you can tell it's C so you have to be in sub component one two or three press C and uh, yeah click once and click again voilà. and if you want to continue you can just click again here and if you wanted to start a new one you would go shift click but here it's enough Q uh, I'm trying to think what else um, yeah I think for the start that'll be enough so let's start doing the color so I'll go here select this go M and it's if it's letter I I would go a uh, paint like P underscore I so the pen for the letter I and you could do right away the color so we'll go uh, orange something like this Voila. paint is usually pretty reflective so I'll stay at four uh, and now we see it what I could do right away is uh, go in shading here and usually we font here it doesn't really matter because it's a flat face but we font usually I would do uh, an edge rounding so here it won't do any difference but uh, it would be nice if it was coplanar a little bit rounded because it's perfectly flat but if it was rounded a clear coat will look like uh, there's a gel um, a lacquer a layer of epoxy I would go 90 on that make it more shiny here uh, and I don't like Fresnel at 100 I'll go 90 that's the perpendicular reflection as you know for the wood I will take the rest uh, many ways you can do this you could select to go L shift up to uh, select more and then uh, actually on purpose I'm not going to select this because it's very select the back it's very easy to make a mistake and I'll go M and call that wood so W I the wood for the letter I and here I would always for uh, my texture always use a color so often I do purple but I will replace but at least I know that thing with our purple I need to assign a map uh, the wood would be way less reflective so we could go one five or two uh, now the wood for sure here we need to uh, round this so in the wood I would go two or three mil 
and uh, the wood will be less reflective we've done that we don't need clear coat yeah we're good and here maybe 70 so let's bring the wood we'll go um, add layer uh, image map load image and here uh, let's try this one never try that open and you see it's using cubic for the projection it's not the best but it's fast now where it's making a big mistake it's here and there frankly if we won't see it you see here I don't see it I will leave it um, but I'll, I'll show you how to fix it but if on if that font was on that angle I will not worry about it so f8 for the preview and we can look at it not too too bad um, in the render that we had, they had a flat, uh, I don't know exactly which color it was. They had this kind of a light uh, pale beige. So to do this in Modo, we go on the environment. Uh, I'm really a big fan of the gray actually. Sometimes I give it color for uh, mimicking sky or warmth. But even this, I've done a lot of scene that looks uh, decent where I just left this. Uh, now, I'm okay to have this for lighting, but uh, I don't want to sit in the background. So what I could do is hide it, keep it for the lighting, duplicate this, and right click. Huh? And here, I can say, show me the gradient, but don't use it for lighting or reflection or refraction so now here I can say don't use a gradient use one color you see and here uh, I think in the new model there'll be an eyedropper but not in this one um, like this a little bit darker I think Yeah, it's not it's not there, but it's it's better than before. So I th hope you understand. This is doing the lighting uh, at a strength of one, but we are not seeing it. And this is doing the background without any lighting, and it's using the color we just made. Yeah. Um, if we wanted to fix the UV, uh, so the UV is here. So the UV is the method we are using to project this uh, texture. So here we're using cubic, which each face get the texture. Quick and dirty, sometimes it works. UV is much better, so we go UV. It's almost like a, not unfolding, but unwrapping uh, the, the, the texture. So right now we don't have any UV. So I could go into the UV tab here usually we don't really need the render and uh, actually I could just select this here and go project and here it's very easy because it's a, a letter so we need a planner just flat uh, which side it depends for sure we don't need the Z uh, because we need the length but X or Y would work. Uh, X would be easier here because you'll follow the map. And then you can go Q. Uh, you don't see it because we need to tell the texture to use it. Voila, and now it's here. So, so far it's very similar than to, to the cubic. But now what I can do, I can go in polygon, select what I need here. And I can project this one and then I can project it the way I want so like this and then I can easily rotate it you see you don't actually have to project we could have rotated it on the fly and fix it I'm scaling it now same with this look I can grab those two they are here and you see we can rotate it but they are grabbing the neighbor so here it's actually we could unstitch it here but we could just reproject uh, 
like that and now I can go E and turn them so they you see and I could grab them one by one okay it's quick and dirty but it works um, now I missed this one I did it on purpose huh, to show you so really easy you go here you go M you don't have to type and you just pick the wood that you made and now it, it gets it now this one is the wrong way so we go project and this one will be the Z I think yeah and we scale it so it's not as big and I think I'm on the wrong polygon yeah no, that's good so the smaller the more you see voila so let's do a quick render Voila. We do have the light here, it's not really pretty. Uh, we could use an aerial light, I think it would be much better. Uh, so we can right click, um, change type to aerial light. And we might need to move it a bit. So go here, show light, and uh, remove the polygon, go back to model, sorry, uh, show light in model not in uh, in UV W E and scale a little bit it might need to be a bit closer too. Okay, let's check Now I'm going to want to use this as a bump so it creates a roughness. The best would be to go in Photoshop, use the bump map uh, tool or convert it in level of gray and um, remove detail with filter offset and do some level things like this. Here I'm going to do it really quick and dirty. Right click uh, copy. Oh I could have just gone duplicate sorry. Uh, why not? Let's close this. Duplicate. Uh, here we go. And set, instead of using color on this one, we can go surface shading bump. Uh, not clear coat, or cl just the bump. And bump, we saw this in class. I don't know why this became black. Maybe it's just the uh, OpenGL, the graphic card. Um, we, a bump is fake, huh? it, it's going to give you the illusion, but it won't, it's not like displacement where you get it model. 5 mil, I often find it a bit too high, I would go 3.5. Um, that's for the depth, and often bump, uh, you don't want to use 0 to 100, you want to use minus 100 to 100, so the, the range is much larger. Now we start to see, the, even in the open gel. Curious to know what's that black. Um, Let's see if it shows up in the render. No, so don't worry about it. And you see now we can see the roughness. And in this case, maybe because of the knot, it's uh, a bit too much. And this is too wide here. So I would have to go in the UV and make it smaller. But it's not that bad. Um, so I'll go maybe about a 3 or 2.5 mm. Okay. Uh, next font, the T, so let's hide the I. Beginning is pretty much the same. One thing I forgot to show also, usually when I'm done with some modeling, I always go geometry, uh, freeze, uh, blah, blah, I'm tired, mesh cleanup. This is a great tool that can fix a lot of things. So even if you don't need it, uh, run it, it's, it won't hurt. Uh, the beginning is very similar, thicken like this, this, Q, and now we're going to start to learn the fall off. So if I wanted to do a bend or a, 
or to get this to shrink slowly um, it will take me a lot of time first of all I would need more slices more edges more loops we could go loop slice add loop um, but there's a quick way here you have to be in polygon uh, in sub component um, mesh edit axis slice and the axis we want as you can tell it's the Z if you're not sure you can try there's only three and let's click and I'm gonna do even more than eight I'll go 12 Q so now if I wanted to scale to have a taper back in the day we used to do it like this and it was so much work you see and on and on and on I don't know for how many years I did things like this and when I saw model handling it a different way I was so happy so here is the scoop uh, without going too complex uh, fall off think of it as a gradient black to white uh, there's many of them they're quite good but the most common one is linear think of a gradient black to white or white to black and you could use this with move with rotate but the most common I would say is to be in subcomponent and it's the scale the R so first go in polygon then press R and that will do this as you know but now you can combine the scale with a fall off look and you'll go linear and you see that triangle think of it as a gradient so now if I scale this it gets scale more than that and vice versa if you want to go the other way it's here you could just say reverse and if you want a nice little blend you could use instead of linear and is in you see a bulge or is out and this is where the effect takes place look it's really powerful so a trumpet effect will be more like this um, and you could actually say don't start right away look when you're happy Q to get rid of the fall off escape okay and Modo has many tools that actually use the fall off under the hood. One tool that I love, it's called the bend. So same thing, you have to be in polygon. And uh, Control E, the bend is here, it's under deform, bend. So Control E, and you click somewhere. This is the center of your bend with the angle and the range. So if you put it here, you'll only bend this put it there you'll bend the entire font so let's try that you see and if you go Q just for fun we'll do it again Control E but this time I'll do it from the middle so you see the difference yeah or even that could be fun too Q voila uh, and I think the rest is the same polygon B uh, shift no not even shift click just move it just a little bit yeah uh, then do the the C uh, depend on what kind of scratch you want but we could do one uh, like this this come here and here then shift to start a new one and here here and here shift to start a new one voila Now I can go shift here, like this, and like that, and that would be one scratch. So to do the front, uh, color-wise, shift click, uh, let me think, uh, 
shift up arrow to grow control to deselect we this is part of the wood and m and this would be uh, paint p underscore t and here we'll give it the color so if this is uh, uh, some sort of uh, yellowish we'll do it here Voilà. Uh, and because of the paint we can go 4% and remember anything with paint here we'll go material and we'll put that to 90% and we can do a little bit of a fillet to 2 mil to do the wood again uh, polygon and we can select uh, this one and this one L oh I must have done something wrong here Oh, sorry, this one and this one. L, shift up arrow. And here. M, uh, W underscore T. And here uh, the paint will be uh, the wood will be 1.5. And remember the wood, I always pick a color so I know which one it is. And here, uh, quick and dirty, we can select those two. Right click, copy, and paste them here. Uh, actually, here in between. And uh, we might need to tweak the UV. Sometimes you don't see the map, uh, it's because you have to go here. Sometimes, it's, I don't know if it's a bug or not, but sometimes you click once and the map appears. But here I think we have to do the UV anyway. So UV, uh, and uh, here I'm gonna go project, and uh, project it this way. Here is tricky because it has a bend. So you go Q and you might want to go E. There's a way of flattening this, but for now, like on a text like this, if we don't see it well, I would not worry about it. Um, and make sure it's using the, the right UV. Uh, trying to see why we are not seeing it. W. UV. Voila, it's the bug or something. Here I should have turned it more because it is a bit ugly. And in the drawing I was showing you, it was more like this. It was coming from the bottom to the. Voila. So now if we want to hide the other one, uh, you get the effect. Okay, the light is a bit uh, weak. We could also use an HDR. Huh? We don't have to use the, the, the gray. Uh, let's try this actually. Um, 